After hanging out and brewing with a bunch of different brewers for Project Extreme Brewing, I've noticed that there's one thing that we all seem to have in common. It's that we all started on some sort of janky system in a kitchen or a garage. After countless errors and many iterations of equipment, we have each evolved into the brewers that we are today. You can make a great beer with just four ingredients, barley, hops, water, and yeast. But to make an extreme beer, those four ingredients put together the same old way isn't enough. This is Project Extreme Brewing. With me today is an old friend and literally a legend in the homebrewing community, Charlie Papazian. We'll be brewing one of the more popular recipes from his famous book, The Complete Joy of Homebrewing. Maybe the popularity also comes from the name, Goat Scrotum Ale. So we got mashed in, we got a little bit of time. What does a brewer do between mashing and boiling usually? Relax, don't worry, I have a... Brew. A brew. The beer that we're brewing with you today is one of your sort of most recognized recipes that's come for you from history and really a, a groundbreaking recipe. Cheers. Which Cheers is pretty it. damn dark in color as well. Yes, Talk it is. to us about this brew that we're brewing today and the, the genesis of the recipe and the genesis of the name. Well, the Complete Joy of Home Brewing, the, my book. That's the one that got and, me started in my brewing career. The most popular, there's about four or five really popular recipes in that book. And one of them is this black porter that has a good story. To yeah, it. I want to do started, tell, do tell. It started out as a black porter. Yeah. I was in the, in the mid 70s. I was teaching homebrew classes. Then we migrate to the kitchen. We start brewing every every week. We brew a batch of beer. Yeah. And that week we were brewing a dark beer, a yeah. porter. The people who liked beer were desperate for good beer. <laughs> yeah. And the only way you could get good beer was to make it yourself. DIY. That was, that was the imp impetus for yeah. making homebrew. Early human brewers were super adventurous, not bound by tradition, but only by their local terroir, what grew under the lands they lived on, and creativity. We go to the kitchen, we put the ingredients together. Our method, methodolo methodology in those days was pretty primitive, and we put all the specialty grains in a cheesecloth bag and immersed it in the malt extract and the water and just let it steep for a while. And yep. While we're drinking beer and another beer, another beer, you know, someone noticed that the spice cabinet was right above the kitchen Ooh, stove. Like a good spice and cabinet. And boom, you know, Pandora's wonderful <laughs> box. And oh, cinnamon. Oh, little have a little allspice in there. Yeah. Oh, what's that cayenne pepper doing up there? Oh, oh. So we started putting all these spices in there. Nice. Like the and so the decisions were made to add these culinary ingredients. And that's, of course, you know, I, I read your book and this recipe stood out for me when I was a 23 year old dreaming of opening my own brewery. And it was definitely informed my journey uh, where I said, let's make Dogfish Head focused on making the majority of our beers with culinary ingredients outside the Rhine Heights boat. So I had the perspective of having that book in front of me. You didn't have anything like oh, that no, no in your front windshield when you were making we these. We didn't know what Rhein Heights boat meant. Right. I mean, that was, that it was, was like, was God bless our, you. That was a yeah, Gesundheit. <laughs> it might as well have been a Gesundheit. Right. This, this brewery here, what's missing is a spice rack right over because that was what inspired us. Hey, we actually do our food trip truck probably has its own spice rack. Oh, uh, let's, let's check it out. Maybe do an audible, we'll add something in addition. Ooh, that could be an interesting. What else do you like? Green pepper. We're taking all three. I think we're taking all three. All right, success. If you're listening to us speak right now, and you're probably taking for granted that, well, spices, I mean, it was always around, but we were just discovering. That yeah. was probably the first time. What's that, what was that feeling like as a, as a collective? We were having good time. Yeah. I mean, we, were, we had a few homebrews under our belt. Yes, you did. And that's what we were having, the passion for having good time yeah. and enjoying good flavored beers and collaborating yeah. the whole foundation of what's happening in America started out. Your living road. room was like a microcosm of that collaborative culture that's still vibrant in the indie craft movement in America today. Because we had to rely on ourselves. Yeah. We had to rely on sharing information. Yeah. Even in those days before internet and fax, and yeah. the, you know, it was pretty primitive. It was yeah. word of mouth. Yeah. It was word and conversations and helping each other kind of make better beer.
Tell me about the part of your creative journey where you went from a, a written syllabus for yeah. class into writing the yeah. Bible of homebrew. I had all this uh, information because my homebrew classes taught me how to brew because we were brewing every week. So yeah. I, I was teaching myself yeah. and I published, self-published a 76 page Joy of Brewing. First, the was first, it called Joy of Homebrewing or Brewing? Joy of Brewing. The first one was Joy of Brewing. Yeah. Yep. I like the sound of that. We started a batch of beer, we never had the name. We was went, that part of the fun, waiting yeah, until you had a homebrew yeah, or two yeah, in you? Something inspired us yeah, yeah. all the time to name these beers. Yep. Yeah. And here we were, it's ready to uh, take the grains out of the wort and get all that goodness. And, you mean the cheesecloth cheese full of yeah, specialty yeah, grains? Yeah. yeah. People were saying, whoa, man, there's a lot of good stuff in there still. Let's, what, how are we gonna get it out? And then we started squeezing the bag. It was the part of the fun part process. And yeah. one woman says, says, you know what that looks like? Yeah, what? It looks like a ghost scrotum. She said, <laughs> The sack like of grown. greens looked like a, a goat, goat scrotum. scrotum. It was yeah, an epiphany it. moment. It says, goat scrotum ale. So <laughs> it was obvious what we were going to name that <laughs> beer, and it became a legendary beer. Goat so scrotum ale beer. was born. Born. It's being reborn today. <laughs> Cheers. Well, I'm glad we're doing this. We should get back and check in on Amanda and see how the goat scrotum is evolving. Let's do it. We pop back into brewing just in time to help Amanda add the ingredients we pilfered from our food truck. Juniper berries, bay leaves, green peppercorns, rosemary, and cranberries. All went into the cheesecloth bag, then into the boil. What do you think of the concept of extreme brewing? How would you define this sort of outside the box brewing and your, wow. your history it's, with it? It's tied to the time and place because in those days, uh, when we were making basically English style pale ales and porters. That was extreme? That, that was extreme. It's a beer that's not only unusual out of the realm of what you usually brew but it's a beer that assaults the palate and assaults <laughs> the senses but it's an assault on the sensibility yeah. of what is normal yeah it's supposed to be challenging it's challenging but that's a beautiful thing that's why we shed out all these different beers that we now have the world's biggest brewing conglomerates tried to convince us through marketing of, of oh no we just need one beer right mm -hmm. and where do you think extreme beer goes from here in 2017 where will the young uh, brewers from around the world, adventurous brewers, take extreme? Where could you see extreme a decade from now? I think we missed the boat on one, on one aspect of brewing. What's that? That I think we will circle back on. Circle back onto our is the basic, the soul of beer, and that, that's the malt, the mm -hmm. grain bill, mm -hmm. fermentable carbohydrates. I yeah. think that. That is yet to be explored. Yeah, yeah. I know, accept the challenge. We'll do yeah. something fun with that. Yeah, it's, it, you know, and I, I don't have any answers yet, yeah. but we never had answers for things we didn't know about. And here we are drinking like a black IPA. I like that. <laughs> so it was great having Charlie Papazian, literally the patriarch of not just the craft brewing movement, but the American home brewing renaissance here at our brewery to brew one of his quintessentially extreme uh, beers with us. And this one, it's not just the greatest of all time, it is Goat Scrotum Ale. It's so perfect that this is the beer we got to brew with Charlie, because if you look at the craft brewing world and how the American craft brewers have really, you know, redefined what beer can be and jumped lovingly and adventurously outside the Rhein Heights Kabot and brought so many culinary opportunities into the world of commercial beer, our movement started as an outgrowth of the first phase of the American homebrewing movement. So when homebrewing started in America, it started in these little kitchens. And what's in every kitchen in America? A spice rack. So it made perfect sense that this first generation of intrepid homebrewers looked around their kitchen while they were brewing with their friends and not only shared ideas and laughs with their friends, but shared opportunities for other ingredients to go into those beers. And so what does it taste like? Goat scrotum ale. Oh wow, so it is spicy and malty of the special ingredients that we added to it. I would say that juniper is very far forward. It has a really nice sort of earthy, woodsy character. I think I get a little bit of the oatmeal cookies that we crumbled into there. And just a general sense of spice and when you breathe it in, you kind of feel like you're on an awesome hike through the forest on a snowy day. 
So if you're a home brewer or an aspiring home brewer who wants to really explore your creative side, I urge you to go out and buy Project Extreme Brewing or whatever indie bookstore you shop at or at dogfish.com. We were really proud to do this project and this book with my homies, Todd and Jason Alstrom of The Beer Advocate. Respect beer, respect extreme beer. Cheers.